The James Webb Space Telescope has discovered an array of astonishing objects in the furthest reaches of the cosmos, including stars that are about to go supernova, cosmic tarantulas, and space explosions that defy explanation. More than one and half year has passed since the mighty James Webb Space Telescope unveiled its first iconic image of the cosmos, which astounded scientists around with its incredible level of clarity. And now scientists at the European Space Agency have used NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, renowned as humanity's most potent telescope, has made a significant discovery by detecting 150 Jupiter-sized free-floating objects that are unattached to any star in space. They are detected in the famous Orion Nebula. These enigmatic celestial bodies have been dubbed as Jupiter mass binary objects, or jumbos. The discovery is fascinating since it shows that these objects seem to be traveling in pairs. Our knowledge of how stars and planets are formed has been completely changed by this discovery. The new findings challenge the conventional theory that nebulas, which give birth to stars inside enormous clouds of gas and dust, are not capable of spontaneously producing planet-sized objects. The fact that the objects are generated in pairs, rather than separately, make the situation even more perplexing. Join us today as we explore more about these new amazing discovery of these celestial bodies by the James Webb Telescope. The Jupiter mass binary objects, often known as jumbos, are free-floating objects that can be seen in stunning photos acquired by the James Webb Space Telescope. The objects break the conventional concept of a planet because they are not in an orbit around a parent star, despite the fact that they are too small to be stars. The discovery also appears to confound existing theories about how planets and stars form, which suggests that the process that creates stars cannot produce objects larger than Jupiter inside the gas and dust clouds seen in nebula. The enormous, hot, gaseous objects have a composition that makes them look like planets, but they aren't actually planets. Study has found that their atmospheres contain steam and methane, Given that there have been hundreds of planet-like objects discovered and that many of them are in pairs, the researchers decided to call them Jupiter-mass binary objects. The latest James Webb image is actually a mosaic of 700 views, collected over the course of a week of observations by Webb's NIRCAM instrument. To put the image in perspective, a spaceship traveling at light speed would need a little more than four years to complete the journey. The distance between Earth and the nebula is around 1,400 light years. Thousands of newborn stars with masses ranging from 40 down to less than 0.1 times that of our Sun are hidden away in this view. However, in certain cases, these disks are being destroyed by the intense UV radiation and powerful winds from the most massive stars in the area, especially from the trapezium. Many of these stars are surrounded by dense disks of gas and dust that may be producing planets. The information already mined by older observatories, including Webb's direct predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, has been greatly enhanced by scientists using Webb's exceptional resolution and infrared sensitivity. The Orion Nebula, also known as Messier 42, M42, or NGC 1976, is a diffuse nebula in the Milky Way that can be seen in the constellation of Orion to the south of Orion's belt. With an apparent magnitude of 4.0, it is one of the brightest nebula and can be seen in the night sky with the naked eye. It is the zone of enormous star formation that is most nearby to Earth. 
The M42 Nebula is estimated to be 24 light years across, making it appear to be one degree across from Earth. Its mass is around 2,000 times greater than that of the Sun. The Orion Nebula is frequently referred to as the Great Orion Nebula, or the Great Nebula in Orion. Even in places with some light pollution, one may see the Orion Nebula with the naked eye. As one of the three stars south of Orion's belt, it is seen as the middle star in the sword of Orion. A very young open cluster found in the Orion Nebula is called the Trapezium Cluster because its four primary stars are asteroid-shaped and have a diameter of 1.5 light years. On clear nights, two of these can be split into their individual binary systems, yielding a total of six stars. Numerous more stars, including the stars of the Trapezium Cluster, are still in their early stages of formation. The Orion Nebula has long been studied by astronomers, but the scientists involved in the New Webb Telescope study of the area say the new images are, by far, the best views yet. The new photos provide amazing spectral sensitivity and spatial resolution. In the image on the left, Taken with Webb's near-cam short wavelength channel, the nebula, its stars, and several other objects are displayed in unprecedented high definition in the near-infrared. Many of the young stars have planet-forming disks of thick gas and dust surrounding them. In other cases, the strongest winds and intense ultraviolet radiation from the region's most massive stars are destroying those disks. The image shows a lot of these photo-evaporating disks. On the right, the image from Webb's near-cam long wavelength channel shows the gas, dust, and molecules with unprecedented infrared sensitivity, though at a lower spatial resolution than in the short wavelength image. The surrounding area contains a mixture of dust and molecular gas, which is seen in reds, browns, and greens. The cavity is primarily filled with ionized gas, which is shown here in purple. Giant gas and dust clouds gradually merge under the pressure of gravity to become stars in our universe. Eventually, areas of a cloud are so dense that they force hydrogen atoms together and ignite nuclear fusion, creating the star's core. Deuterium fusion is a more minor form of fusion that can take place in less dense environments and smaller objects. Jumbos seem to belong to a smaller category of gaseous objects. The new objects can become as small as roughly half the mass of the planet and have temperatures of more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas brown dwarfs can grow to be around 13 times the mass of Jupiter. They orbit one another on paths that take more than 20,000 years to complete and are separated by an amount roughly equivalent to 200 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. They could be simpler to explain if they were alone in space. However, the Webb telescope in the Orion Nebula has detected 42 of them in pairs, which is puzzling. There are two potential formation scenarios for these enormous objects. One possibility is that these objects emerged from areas of the nebula, where the material density was insufficient to form fully developed stars. Another possibility is that they formed around stars and were ejected into interstellar space as a result of numerous interactions. However, it is also unclear why there would be so many of them even if they were planets that were violently thrown out of newborn stars by gravitational forces. The finding is completely unexpected. Our Sun is one of the many stars that are born in pairs, if not all stars. However, as binary objects lose mass, their frequency declines because their lower gravitational attraction makes them prone to being split apart. But the existence of jumbos suggests we might be overlooking a crucial step in the formation of these incredibly low mass particles. The James Webb Space Telescope has significantly reshaped our understanding of the early universe. 
it has provided breathtaking cosmic imagery and unveiled remarkable insights, including the existence of the earliest known galaxies and black holes. The Webb telescope is approximately 100 times more powerful than the Hubble telescope, making it a groundbreaking instrument for astronomical research. By examining the light coming from the planets with the Webb telescope, researchers hope to shed light on the mystery of how the objects evolved and what gases make up their atmospheres. At this time, scientists have been able to identify that they contain water and methane, it may be beneficial to search for jumbos in additional star-forming areas. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting space-related content. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.